Well, hello everybody. This is Louise Eddington. I am the marketing coordinator for OPA events for the Organization of Professional Astrology. And we're here today talking to one of the track leaders at the OPA virtual conference, the 2021 conference, which is um, April the 22nd to the 27th called Astrology and the Great Awakening. And that can be found at opaastrologyevents.org. But you'll find the uh, link in all the descriptions and um, events. And um, so, Omari, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Louise. Uh, hello, everyone. And I am a certified professional astrologer uh, based in Chicago, Illinois. And um, I have been uh, studying astrology uh, for over 15 years, I want to say. And it was actually, I completed um, an astrology course with uh, Norman and Christine Ahrens. And I think I got the bug, <laughs> you know, that bug that bites where you just fall in love with astrology and you want to use it not only for your own benefit, but you want to learn as much as you can about it to help others. And so even for me, uh, having an opportunity to be a track leader at the OPA conference and to present uh, vocational astrology is such an honor for me. Mm -hmm. And we all know what's happening in the world at this time and the impact that COVID-19 has had. Uh, many individuals, unfortunately, have ended up unemployed. So the unemployment levels are just going to be high, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And I think vocational astrology is just a great way to reassess and uh, evaluate what your next steps uh, can actually be. I mean, at this point, who wants to waste time doing something that you really don't love or like, but you make money and it pays the bills? Mm -hmm. With vocational astrology, it's possible to discover not only what you can do to make money, but also what you love, so much so that if you had more than enough money than what you ever needed, it's something that you would actually consider doing for free. And vocational astrology, again, is an approach to take uh, to look at that holistically. Yeah, and I think it's a really important part. And just to kind of explain uh, to the viewers what a track is, you spend three days, um, four hours of each day in, in a very small group, intensively studying that one subject. And you get that in addition to all the other great speakers at the conference. And of course, it's all virtual this year because of COVID. So you can attend from anywhere in the world. And I was telling Amari before we started that I actually, my first paid astrology uh, formal uh, work was written um, career reports for some teenagers. And, you know, it can be life-changing, you know, they, it gave them direction. So, you know, you can not only use this in your work, you can use it for yourself. You know? yes, and you, can yes. guide your, you can guide your clients to to not waste time, you know, going and doing a degree that perhaps your parents think you should do. or something. Like that. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And also, you know, with vocational astrology, you know, there's some who may attend this conference and think about, oh, I want to be in the entertainment field. Mm -hmm. Well, the entertainment field is huge. And maybe you have your eyes set on being an actor. Well, based on the specifics in your birth chart and looking at it through the lens of vocational astrology, maybe that particular slice of entertainment is a fit for you, but maybe you should be behind the camera and not in front of the camera. And there's even something similar to songwriting. Uh, there's a songwriter, uh, her name is Diane Warren, and she has written many hits. Um, she wrote a hit for Whitney Houston and wrote a hit for Tony Braxton, um, Unbreak My Heart, yet we don't even know what Diane Warren looks like. <laughs> and so while she wrote the song, she didn't sing the song. So maybe, you know, Hypothetically, I don't know what her chart looks like, but maybe it's in her chart for her to be the songwriter and not the singer. And so it's a way to just fine tune and find out what your best positioning is in any career endeavor. 
Oh, I wish somebody had looked at my chart when I was younger and uh, and <laughs> my chart screams astrologer and shamanic practitioner, which is what I am. <laughs> well, so I just want to share that my chart does also, um, according to Robert Blotsky, and may he continue to rest in peace. Um, I have the sun conjunct Uranus in my chart, and he told me that that is one of the Cadillac aspects for astrologers. And um, yeah. Let's just say over the years, each and every year that goes by, I embrace being a professional astrologer more and more and more. Me too. <laughs> my son's trying my Uranus. <laughs> oh, see there, he. Yeah, that's one of the Cadillac aspects too. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But various other bits too. But anyway, you just one other point because you know I'm looking at the description on the website. Uh, yes. You you also will be exploring electional astrology a little bit to identify opportune times to apply for, interview for, and resign from a position. So could you yes. explain a little bit more about that? I mean, I yes. know what you mean, but not everybody might do. <laughs> yes, I can, Louise, and thank you. And so with that. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's one thing to use vocational astrology to say, I'm going to apply for the job on this day at this time. And then you actually get the opportunity to interview. And then you actually get an opportunity to pick your start date. Mm -hmm. You can then use electional astrology to choose the best day. Now, chances are it'll have to be eight o'clock, nine o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock at the latest on that particular day. But if you get between Monday of this week and Monday of a following week, between those two weeks, which Monday is the better Monday in terms of the astrological aspects? And that's where electional astrology comes into play again. When should you apply for the position? Also, when should you interview? Uh, a couple of months ago, I had an opportunity to interview on a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. And I was literally on the phone with the um, person from Human Resources with my ephemeris open. See, I have it handy right here on the draw, baby, on the draw. And I'm on the phone with the uh, HR person and I'm literally, oh, let me think about it. I have a few appointments scheduled and I'm looking at the moon. Where's the moon at, baby? Where's the moon at? And then I'm like, well, give me just a second. Can you hold on a moment? And the person said, yes. Then I pulled up my astrology software program and pulled up the chart so I could see it, you know, fuller, you know, like that. And then I gave the date and the time, of course. But that's when you have the option. Sometimes, you know, we don't have the option to do yeah. that. But I think electional astrology really is a great complement to vocational astrology. And again, if you get the opportunity uh, to pick your start date, use electional astrology because you always want to get off and put the best foot forward. I agree. So you can see you're going to get a lot of uh, valuable information in Omari's track. So just a reminder that we have an early bird price and excuse my dog <laughs> till December the 21st and the price goes up after that. Also to ensure that you have a place in um, the track that you want, it's good to sign up early if you have a specific track you choose. So if you want to sign up with Omari, join us as soon as possible. So yes. it's opaastrologyevents.org. And thanks for joining me today, Omari. Thank you, Louise. Take care. Thank you.